Okay, in this particular lesson, we're going to be looking at solving absolute value equations. Uh, I'm calling this module one because we're going to break it into two lessons, uh, just so they're shorter that way. Uh, so absolute value equations look something like these first three. Uh, this first one, what I like to do is solve it by inspection. So meaning absolutely showing no work, just kind of thinking what's the answer and that's going to be our answer. Uh, as far as doing that, what we need to do is uh, just inspect it. For this, In this particular case, I can see that a solution of 7 is definitely going to solve this because x is equal to 7. The absolute value of 7 minus 2 is 5, so that would work. Uh, another possible solution here would actually be negative 3 because negative 3 minus 2 is equal to negative 5 and the absolute value of negative 5 is 5. So our two solutions are 7 and negative 3. Uh, in this next one, what we notice if we investigate this or inspect it uh, is that 2 times whatever this absolute value expression is, minus 3 equals 5. Well, that is going to have to equal 4. This absolute value expression is going to have to equal 4 because 2 times 4 minus 3 is equal to 5. So basically you're asking yourself, what can make the absolute value of x plus 3 equal to 4? And there's, again, going to be two solutions. One of the solutions is going to be when x is 1, because 1 plus 3 is 4, and 2 times 4 is 8. 8 minus 3 is 5. Uh, another possible solution in this case, uh, I believe, would be negative 7, because negative 7 plus 3 is negative 4. The absolute value is positive 4. And we could go from there. So those would be our solutions. Uh, if you had trouble inspecting it that way, uh, another way that you could do it is isolate the absolute value expression. It'll be easier to investigate an answer then uh, by just algebraically adding 3. So we have 2 times the absolute value of x plus 3 is equal to 8, and then dividing by 2. And what you'll see is the absolute value of x plus 3 has to equal 4. And in this case, what you can see is that 1 and negative 7 will be your solutions. Uh, in this next one, what you could do uh, is, like I did previously, isolate the absolute value expression if you'd like to, and the absolute value of x plus 4 has to equal negative 5. Uh, as, we re as we looked at in previous lessons, absolute value makes the expression inside, the evaluated expression inside of it positive, so this expression cannot be negative 5, so there's going to be absolutely no solution by inspection. Uh, what we're going to look at now is how do we solve absolute value equations uh, either algebraically or graphically. Uh, here are the steps as far as that goes, uh, but more importantly is that you practice and understand kind of how it's working. Uh, so the first step algebraically to solving these is to isolate the absolute value expression. Secondly, what we're going to do uh, is in order to represent both the positive and negative uh, expression is solve the equation for when the absolute value expression is both positive, which I'll do in green, and also solve for when the absolute value expression is negative, which I'll do in red. Uh, last thing that you have to do is always check your solutions, and it has to be in the original equa equation. We will have some solutions that actually don't end up being solutions. Uh, <clears throat> in this next one, graphically, uh, the first step is the same. Isolate the absolute value expression. Uh, next, what you want to do, if possible, is graph the function represented on both sides of the equation. So in other words, make y equal to each side. And thirdly, uh, the solutions are the values of x, only where the functions intersect. Uh, you will see that, that there's some limitations to graphing because you can't get exact values necessarily, and you can't necessarily know how to graph all expressions. So we'll see how that works. All right, let's look at this first one. We're going to do two in this lesson, and I think a few more uh, in our next lesson. It says solve uh, the absolute value of negative 1 half x plus 1 is equal to 3. Um, let's actually do this one graphically first, and then I'll go back to algebraically, um, just to kind of change things up a little bit. All right, so far as graphically goes, what we're going to do is graph each side of the equation. So the first thing I'm going to do here is graph y is equal to negative 1 half x plus 1. Okay, the absolute value of negative 1 half x plus 1. Uh, in previous lessons, we looked at how to graph absolute value functions. What I would do is graph the non-absolute value function and then reflect the uh, negative outputs. So this has a y-intercept in slope-intercept form as a line, y-intercept of 1 and a slope of negative 1 half. So this line would look something <clears throat> like this. Uh, however, as we learned in previous lessons, since it's an absolute value, 
uh, function, what would happen is all of these negative outputs would be reflected on the x-axis, and our graph would actually look something more like this. Okay, so this part does not actually exist. Uh, next thing I would do is graph the other side of <clears throat> the equation. So we're going to graph the line y is equal to 3. Uh, y is equal to 3 is actually just a horizontal line through 3 on the y-axis. Okay, so that's what that line looks like. As far as our solutions go, our solutions are where the two functions intersect. And since our original equation is only in the variable x, I'm only interested in the x values of these intersections. So that's negative 4, 3, and this here is 8, 3. So our solutions are going to be negative 4 and 8. So x is equal to negative 4 and 8. Uh, let's solve this graphic, or algebraically, sorry. Uh, algebraically, what we want to do is represent the, well, we have already isolated the absolute value expression. So we want to solve for when that absolute value expression is positive. So in other words, we're going to solve when negative 1 half x plus 1 is equal to 3. And we're also going to solve when it's negative. So I'm going to put the opposite of negative 1 half x plus 1 is equal to 3. Okay, so those are the two uh, equations that we're going to solve. Uh, in this first one, you'll see that the brackets aren't necessary because we're not taking the opposite of the function, so I'm going to erase them. And we can just solve as normal. So we'd subtract 1. Uh, we have negative 1 half x is equal to 2. Then what we could do is uh, multiply both sides by 2. We'll have negative x is equal to 4. Divide by negative 1. We'll get a solution of x is equal to negative 4. Uh, what we're going to have to do is check that. And we have to check it in the original equation. So that's here. Uh, so we have absolute value of negative 1 half times negative 4 plus 1 is equal to 3. And we will end up getting uh, the absolute value of 3 is equal to 3. And that works, so negative 4 is a solution. And this next one, where we're taking the opposite of the absolute value expression, uh, we're going to be want to solve 1 half x minus 1 is equal to 3. And after I add 1, I have 1 half x is equal to 4. And multiply both sides by 2, I have x is equal to 8. Uh, and again, we're going to want to check that solution in the original equation, because uh, as we'll see in the future, sometimes they do not actually... Uh, work out as far as that goes, and there's a reason for that. Uh, so here we have that the absolute value of negative 4 plus 1 is equal to 3, so absolute value of negative 3 is equal to 3, which is true. So our solutions are negative 4 and 8. Let's look at one more example in this lesson, uh, and we'll look at it again exactly the same way. All right, uh, the first step is to isolate the absolute value expression, which is already isolated. We'll look at the next lesson, which is more complicated and looks like quadratics, so you may want to look at that one, uh, where it isn't isolated. But in this case, it is. Uh, so solving algebraically, we want to solve for when the absolute value expression is positive. In other words, just get rid of the absolute value set of brackets. So we're going to solve this equation right here, and also solve for when the absolute value expression or or the opposite of the absolute value expression. So we're going to solve these two equations. Uh, as far as solving it goes, I don't need the brackets on the first one here. So we are simply solving. And what I'll do is minus x from each side. So we'll have uh, 3 is equal to x. Or in other words, x is equal to 3. And let's go ahead and check that solution. Okay. So as I check it, I'm going to get absolute value of 3 plus 3 is equal to uh, 2 times 3, absolute value of 6 is equal to 6. That works. Uh, in the next one, what I'm going to do is uh, distribute the opposite sign. And this is negative x minus 3 is equal to 2x. And after I add x, add x, uh, what we get is negative 3 is equal to 3x, divide by 3. And we'll get a solution of x is equal to negative 1. Uh, after I check this, what I'm actually going to find out it is, is that it is not a solution. Uh, absolute value negative 1 plus 3 is equal to 2x which, or sorry, not 2x, is equal to 2 times negative 1. So you get the absolute value of 2 is equal to negative 2, which is not true. The absolute value of 2 is 2, and 2 is not equal to negative 2. So our solution here is only x is equal to 3. Uh, let's go ahead and look at that graphically. What I'm going to first do is graph again uh, y is equal to each side separately. So I'm going to graph the function y is equal to the absolute value of x plus 3. Uh, and that function is in slope-intercept form already. I'm going to graph the non-absolute value form. Uh, and what that is, is an intercept of 3 and a slope of 1. So I'm going to go ahead and graph this line, and then graph the absolute value of that line. 
<clears throat> okay, uh, we need to take the negative outputs and reflect them so this graph looks something uh, more accurately. Like that, it's an absolute value function, so these don't actually exist. As far as y is equal to 2x, or in other words, this right-hand side, uh, that's not an absolute value function, so y is equal to 2x, has an intercept of 0 and a slope of 2. Uh, so what we, what we can see here is that there is actually only going to be one intersect, and that intersect is what our solution is, uh, and I only want the x-coordinate, it's 3 6. So our solution here is x is equal to 3. Either way you do it, you get the right answer. Some of you might be asking why algebraically we got a solution of negative 1. The reason is when we do the algebraic representation is that what actually happens is both of these lines algebraically are extended uh, continuously. Okay, so what you'll see is if this was actually extended continuously, which it's not in reality, but what the algebra thinks it's doing, uh, you'd have an intersect here of negative 1. But that's actually not an intersect with the absolute value function. So that's the reason why your algebraic representation might sometimes be wrong.